So I'm just going to go over a couple of different ways that you can do pitch shifting. Now, with these different methods, I would definitely try to think outside of the box when you are working on different things, because you can always pitch shift things. I mean, I myself pitch shift my hi-hats a lot of the time. Um, it adds a different texture to things, but I'm going to go ahead and use this sample that I created in video one uh, to exemplify how to pitch and time shift. So I'm going to consolidate this. Let's highlight this. Right click. Tools, consolidate playlist selection from uh, from selection start and this will give me a wave file which is the best to work with I don't need to split it or anything like that I'm just gonna leave it as is and um, make sure that you have leave remainder on this situation all right click start bam there it is okay So we have this WAV file here, <clears throat> and I, the reason I consolidated it is because it's going to allow me to pitch shift this whole entire thing. If I were to pitch shift one of these clips, it would only pitch shift the clip, um, but not the actual full thing. So that's why I consolidated it. Uh, I believe this is the marker that, or the sound that was created from that consolidation clip. I can normalize it so it's louder. I can also uh, reverse it if I wanted. I could normalize and reverse it. Uh, but that's not really uh, within the scope of what we're trying to do here. We're trying to pitch shift this. Uh, one way to do that is through the piano roll. You can click on the piano roll. Now, as long as it has resample selected, you have the ability to use the piano roll. This is where it normally is, but you could play it lower. It just depends on what you're looking for. I personally find that using the keyboard helps a lot if you're concerned with keeping things in the same key. And what I mean by that is, if you know the key of the sample or the song or the sound that you were using, you can literally change it from C to F or G or A or A flat if you want And the thing that I also want to communicate is that unless you know the pitch of your actual sample, clicking this like a flat doesn't mean that it's in a flat. It means that it's been shifted 100 hertz, 200 hertz, 300 hertz, 400 hertz. That's what that means, that it's been shifted 400 hertz. All right, so that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is to go here inside of the channel rack and click on that specific sound. Uh, play with this number here, bring it up to 12. Um, it doesn't have to be 12. It could be one or five or six, but 12 uh, gives you the representation of the full uh, semitone um, scale. So you get 1200 Hertz in total, which means that each 100 that you do uh, is one key down. So kind of like this, um, kind of like the piano roll. So let's see. Let's do a quick little test here. This should sound the same. Um, if I click here. If I shift down 100 hertz over here, it should give me the same sound. Oh, cents, 100 cents. Well, actually, if I wanted to do that specifically, I would make this one. Then like reset it and then shift it one. So it brings it to 100 cents. This should be the same sound 
and it is so if I reset this that should sound the same same thing so just to just to clear up what just happened there each number represents a hundred cents okay 100 cents is the amount of frequency that it takes to move from one note to the next note so leaving it at start position means that there is no pitch shifting that has occurred so this is how it naturally sounds and that's the same here so if i have it on one and i shift this down to 100 cents that's what it sounds like and if i reset it and hit it here same sound it's the same exact amount of shifting so if i put it on two okay if i reset this and go down two notes one two same sound that should just help you understand now a lot of times like i had mentioned before like shifting hi-hats and stuff i put it on 12 and then i just kind of shift until i feel good about it um and that could work with with samples too if you didn't lay down drums in a bass line and all sorts of stuff like that first you could kind of like shift it until it feels good to you. Uh, but if you already have a song that's structured or you're creating an instrument or a um, an arrangement that you want to fit in with something else, then know what the key is and shift your sound accordingly. So this would just be arbitrarily shifting it. See, so that's like 708 cents, so that's close to what seven down would sound like. One, let me see, let me just make sure. Ah, that's like a lot closer to where it was. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There it is, yeah. See how close those sound? Sweet, so you can also obviously shift upward too if you needed to, or if you wanted to. Up 100. If I reset this, same sound. All right, so I think you got that concept. Now when you shift it like this, and it's in a playlist, me shifting the pitch should actually move the length of it here. Yeah, see that? Because it's it's extending based on, um, I mean, realistically, if you were to slow it down, it would take more time for that sound to come out. So that's why the sample is extending. If you switch it to a different mode, that won't necessarily be the case. But before we do that, this pitch shift knob operates directly on a hundred cents each. So it's like a perfect notch situation and it's not moving this because it's just changing the pitch. It's not changing the time. Um, this is a more, this knob offers a more realistic change while this is a little bit more of a computed change. So if I did a hundred, Two hundred. Three hundred. And it automatically sw switches to auto in that instance. So if I were to play it now, it would sound like that. But it's maintaining the, uh, the time there while I change the pitch. Okay. I'll reset that, put it back to resample. Now I'll play with the time. See, now this is operating on the bar or the beat. So if I go, <clears throat> don't get too bothered with that stuff. You can actually change this by right clicking and click one beat. 
that's what it would sound like. You can always test it by clicking on it. Two beats. One bar. Two bars. And if you want to play with it, you can do both the time and the pitch. Okay, so those are those options. Now, that's the other way that you can pitch shift or time shift. Your time knob right here is controlling your time if you want to keep it at a certain time. And this one is controlling your pitch if you want to keep it at a certain pitch. Uh, but you can select stretch and it'll maintain the pitch for you um, in a much more realistic way than auto or resample might. So I'm gonna see how it's the same frequency. The cool thing about doing that is that you could realistically make it sound like it was being played in real life, like from slow to fast. This kind of breaks into something that I'll talk about a little bit in class, uh, but it talks about like the automation of things. I could automate the tempo if I wanted. So if I set this on stretch and I played this, I could speed it up and slow it down based on this BPM here. So. Without changing the key. just the speed and then you can change the pitch and do the same thing see how it's maintaining the pitch if I put this on resample and I tried to do that it would have a different effect I believe so let's put it on four bars and put this back to reset. Okay. So this is how it sounds because of that speed. All right. See how it's changing the pitch? Even though it's maintaining the same time, the pitch is changing in relation to the speed. Stretch doesn't cause that effect, as you could see, that I just previously showed. Now, same thing will happen if I change the pitch. Still changing the pitch. Stretch doesn't do that. I put it on stretch and I set everything back to the original amount, put it on four bars. Same pitch. Even if I change the pitch knob, it'll maintain whatever the pitch is that I had it at. Right there. So those are the major three ways that you can do pitch shifting. I wouldn't confuse myself too much with some of this other stuff. You don't really need it. I'd say that like auto, resample, and stretch, you'll probably get the most use of. Stretch is my absolute favorite though. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope that that's helpful for you. And I guess look out for the next video.